The 2024 CrossFit Games are headed to Fort Worth, Texas, and the team competition this year is shaping up to be one of the best yet, thanks in large part due to some perennial individuals making their way over to the team side and dominating at semifinals. With August fast approaching, we're gonna give you guys the can't miss team stories heading into the games as we head towards the finals at the Lone Star State. I'm Tommy Marquez, and joining me now to talk teams is reporter Lauren Smith. Lauren, thanks for joining me. And I think a safe place to start maybe is at the top and the returning and reigning Affiliate Cup champions, CrossFit Invictus. It's an easy one to start with, isn't it, Tommy? I mean, quite often when you only got one person returning for a CrossFit Games after you've just won the championship, that could be the death of the team, but not these guys. Joshua Chalmer, Lauren Fisher, Chandler and Jesse Smith, they won the North American West semi-final and they've just brought a huge amount of experience together. I actually got an opportunity to chat to Josh Alchama just this morning. He says a big benefit of this group is that a lot of them have been training together for a number of years, whilst not in a team format. Himself and Chandler have been training together in the build-up to the last year's CrossFit Games, where they took a gold medal, even though Chandler was going individual. Obviously, Chandler and Jesse have that personal relationship. I mean, this group teamed up at the back end of last year, but the dynamic this time has just got so much closer. Their biggest strength, arguably, is communication. You've got Chandler making the calls, ex-army. And between them, there is a number of games, performances, both team and indie. And then you bring in the experience of Lauren Fisher. I'm not sure it gets much better than that. Four times games team athlete, four times indie. That entire package is really exciting. But they're not the only Invictus team going to the games. You've also got Unconquerable. They came sixth worldwide in the quarterfinals and second at the North American West semi-final. I bet Invictus were absolutely buzzing. They're a strong team. They won the lifting event worldwide in the semis. Hannah Black has a 97 kilogram. Um, if I do the maths quickly, a 215 pound snatch. And over the past four years, Invictus have just had two or more teams going to the games every single year and they're always strong. No doubt, uh, the sea of green from Invictus always shows up, uh, and this year's games will be no exception. But every year, a new super team forms and, and tries to make a run at the podium. And I think it's safe to say that maybe the super team this year that grabbed headlines immediately was the Peak 360 CrossFit team. How could it not? Noah Olsen and Matilde Garns going for their first full game season on a team. That's pretty exciting in itself. And I can't think of too many examples where Americans and Europeans have teamed up in such a way where they're all so high profile. There's eight CrossFit Games team appearances between Richter and Maracanio as well, just to add that little bit of experience that perhaps Olsen and Garnes are lacking on the team side. And the girls have moved to Miami. They're spending a huge amount of time together. They're now getting very used to the heat. What interests me the most though, is the fact that they're still being programmed by the CLIA training team. And they have proven time and time again as a team programming unit to be very successful with CrossFit Oslo Navy Blue. And it's great to see how that might adapt over into this kind of more American setup. Really excited to see those guys take the floor. I don't, I don't think I've adjusted to seeing Noah Olsen on a team yet, but I'm sure by the time we get to Fort Worth, it'll start to set in. And even just seeing him in a CrossFit Games jersey in the team format will probably make it very, very real. But as we expand the scope now a little bit more globally to some teams that maybe that can contend, one that certainly can and maybe caught some people's attentions last year out of Sweden is that CrossFit Prestanda team. Alexander Elbro, he's got five CrossFit games under his belt. He joins forces with Victor Langsved, who's returned. Three out of the four of them, Maria Langford's still there as well. And they've just added this little bit of extra in Leah Anderson. They did so well at semifinals. They took the top spot. Not just that, they've all been traveling from all over Sweden and they've really committed to making sure they see each other every weekend. It's, it's one of those underdog teams. It's one of those that you wouldn't naturally say because no, there's no standout individuals there, but they've been operating as a team unit for such a period of time now, you certainly cannot rule them out. And Alexander and Victor, they've had a friendship of over 10 plus years in the CrossFit space. And I don't think you can overlook what that kind of familiarity does to a team. Yeah, totally. Experience at any level of competition, especially the games, always pays off in spades. And you're talking about experience, maybe even, you know, hardware at the games. No gym is more decorated than CrossFit Mayhem, but it's not the CrossFit Mayhem Freedom Team what we're used to seeing. This year, it's a little bit different with Mayhem Independence. 
Yeah, I mean, we're getting very used to Angelo Di Calco and Sam Demisa, aren't we? They actually dropped the independence because they want to be the mayhem team from now on. Angelo, he's a decorated former team athlete. And this year, three of his former members have returned from the CrossFit Games. I remember where slightly out of nowhere in the first event last year, they went and took it by storm and took us all a little bit by surprise. Rich is training them. He's helping them with strategy. You know, you cannot underestimate how important that is to a team, having someone of his experience in their corner. And there is perhaps a rumor that this is their last year together. So I can imagine that they're going to want to put a few wrongs to right after last year, after they felt like a few events held them back. I mean, they finished seventh. It wasn't like it was a particularly poor performance, but this is a team that feel that they can certainly be in contention for a podium. No doubt. And, you know, if it is their last year, a podium would be a nice swan song for uh, a gym that has just so much talent like CrossFit Mayhem does. Uh, but we mentioned a super team earlier, but I think if we're talking collection of individuals moving over to the team side, you can't ignore another Swedish team that is really kind of carrying the banner alongside uh, Prestanda from Sweden is Walleye. Yeah, I think I think they would actually be upset by calling them a super team because it's not like I mean they are super there are a lot of very talented individuals but at the same time this is a group of people who have brought themselves together out of friendship and I think a lot of people are overlooking that you know you had Jamie shoulder surgery Elliot had surgery Christoph has never made it to the games as an individual or on a team and you've got Mia who's trying to work out what she's going to do with her kind of work life balance or training life balance so there's something really bonding this group together through this experience and I spoke to Elliot Simmons about it plenty of times he says what they have transcends fitness their focus has been very much on the games from the get-go so we have not seen them like perform to their fullest at semi-finals, especially as Christoph Horvath picked up a little bit of an injury on that lifting event. Um, they were ninth worldwide in quarterfinals. That was right at the start of their journey. We're talking about peaking for the games. I can see them only go up, up and up. And for the first time, we get to see Christoph Horvath make it to the games alongside his girlfriend and Gabriella Magawa and also his sister, the great Laura Horvath. Um, I think for all of them, this entire kind of experience has just been everything they've been working towards throughout their career or where their careers brought them to at this period of time. I'm really excited to see what they can do. And they are a team that thoroughly believe that they can win this. No doubt. Great to see, you know, Christoph finally making it through. Hope that there's no more injuries. Everybody's healthy and on the up and up because it'd be exciting to see that team in contention come Sunday. Um, but, you know, speaking of another region, you know, in the competitive landscape, one that doesn't have a podium finish at the CrossFit Games from the team side, that's Oceania. But the team that maybe could do it, the Raw Iron CrossFit crew, also dubbed Mayhem Thunder, another Mayhem affiliated team. Now, these guys, I I really don't know quite as well. I've obviously seen them compete plenty of times. I know them as very strong individual athletes. Carl and Porter obviously also going team a few times as well. But how are they going to perform together? Kara Saunders, James Newbury, you know, those are names that have been on the individual circuit for such a period of time. And on paper, they've got 22 total CrossFit Games appearances between them. That's the most out of all of the teams there. They're obviously the best Oceania super team, but when you stack them up, they were 55th worldwide in the quarterfinals. So that, that kind of maybe makes you feel a little bit uncertain. Mm -hmm. However, Cara Saunders said that poked the bear. She was super unhappy with that performance. And it's only, and obviously it drew them to a pretty impressive win at Torian Pro. So when you put it all together and you give them the time together they'll need and build up to the games, could this be the first Oceania team that we could see finish on a podium? And the answer is it really might well be, especially with the collective individual experience amongst them. No doubt. And, and if Carl Saunders says they poke the bear, you better believe yeah. her because her pedigree in the sport is as good as any on the women's side, especially with her battles from T on the indie side from back in the day. Uh, Lauren, thanks as always. Everyone back home, take note and get ready because the games are just around the corner. The CrossFit Games will take place August 8th through 11th at Dickey's Arena in Fort Worth, Texas. For more info, head on over to games.crossfit.com.